Another thing we can do is we can talk about equations that have radicals in them. And this is not somebody like Abby Hoffman, but rather it's an equation that involves a root, generally a square root, but we can look at other roots as well. So in general, if I have the square root of a equals b, then I know that a is equal to b squared. And conversely, if I have a equals b squared, I can reverse that and get b is equal to the square root of a. And what this means is that if I have an equation that involves a radical, some sort of a root, I can use algebra to isolate that radical and then square both sides. If it's a quadratic, I can square both sides and get rid of the square root. Now, one thing we have to be careful with, this symbol always means the positive number whose square is a. And what that means is that I have to make sure that I always end up with a positive number here. And when I square both sides, I lose sign information. So it's possible that when I'm solving a radical equation, I may end up with what are called extraneous solutions. Solutions to this equation that won't actually work as solutions to the original equation. And because of that, it's important to always test your solutions to verify that they really are solutions. For example, let's say I want to solve square root of x minus 5 equals x minus 7. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get my equation in the form square root equals well, I have it, square root equals stuff. So this is already in the form that I want it to be in. So now I can square both sides. I'll square both sides, and that will get rid of the square root over on the left-hand side. Over on the right-hand side, I have x minus 7 squared. I'll expand that out. And let's see. Um, I have a quadratic equation, so I'll want to get all of my terms over to one side. And let's see. I'll subtract x, add 5. Subtract x, add 5 to both. Over on the left-hand side, everything is gone. Over on the right-hand side, that's x squared minus 15x plus 54. And here I have the quadratic equation, so I'll find the solutions using the quadratic formula. And I'll substitute in my values. And after all the dust settles, I have my solutions, 9 or 6. Now, it's important to understand at this point that these are potential solutions. x could be 9 or x could be 6. However, because I squared both sides of my radical equation, it's possible that one or both of these solutions won't actually solve my original equation. So I need to check. So we'll check x equals 9. If x equals 9, the left-hand side, square root 9 minus 5, the right-hand side, 9 minus 7, and I want to determine whether these two are equal. So I'll evaluate square root of 4 is 2, and I have to decide is 2 equal to 2. Well, that's a true statement. So x equals 9 is a solution. Now I need to check the other potential solution, x equals 6. So I'll substitute that into my original equation. And I'll let the dust settle. Square root of 1 is equal to 1. And this is a false statement. 1 is not equal to negative 1. So x equals 6 is an extraneous solution, and we should make sure that we indicate that. So I have my potential solutions, but then I know that x equals 6 is extraneous and not a solution. Well, let's take a look at another example, square root of x plus 3 plus 5 equals 2. And again, this is not in the form square root of a equals b, so I have to transform it into that form. So I'll... Uh, well, I'll subtract 5 from both sides. I'll get square root of x plus 3 is equal to negative 3. Now, a little analysis goes a long way. At this point, if you remember the definition of square root, it is the positive number whose square is whatever the thing's inside. Uh, from that definition, square root can never be a negative number. The square root of anything cannot be a negative number, so no value of x will make this equation true. If you recognize that, and again, that is from a little bit of analysis and remembering the definition of square root, from that information, this equation has no solution, which means that we can actually stop, the problem, stop solving the problem right here and say there is no solution. If we don't recognize that, if we don't do the analysis, if we don't remember what the definition of square root is, 
we can do a little bit more work. We can square both sides. We can solve for x. x equals 6, and I find x equals 6 is a potential solution. We have to check our solutions in the original equation. So x equals 6 is a potential solution, so I'll substitute that into my original equation. And I end up with a false statement. 3 plus 5 is definitely not equal to 2. And so that says that x equals 6 is not a solution. It's an extraneous solution. And since it's the only potential solution, this equation has no solutions. And again, that's something we actually could have realized back here if we remembered the definition of square root. If we did a little bit of analysis, we would have saved ourselves all of this extra work by doing those things. So a little bit of analysis goes a long way. The definitions are really important.